All right, I jumped ahead. This is I. This is also another kind of important thing to talk about. I've, I've wanted to talk about this for a little while, um, and I started seeing a lot more stories about it because uh, I think it passed in the House, uh, narrowly passed in the House, I should say. The PRO Act, the uh, Protect the Right to Organize Act, uh, which, God damn it, is, isn't it fucking sad that we have to, like, we have to come up with legislation to to protect our fucking right to organize as workers in this country. How fucking sad is it? Again, that's a consequence of capitalism, not a consequence of socialism. Where where you have to go, no, we have the right to come together as the working class and say that we are being fucked by the oligarchs and we would like that to stop. Now, the PRO Act isn't something new. We have seen this before. The PRO Act is, uh, for all intents and purposes, a lot of it is very similar to the Wagner Act of 1935. The Wagner Act of 1935 uh, basically legitimized unions and gave collective bargaining powers to, um, to the working class. Uh, it also gave them the right to organize within their workplace. Uh, so, you know, workers were treated a lot better even during the Depression than they are now. Uh, because for about a decade, for from from uh, about 1935 to about 1946, 47, um, the Wagner Act was very, very beneficial to the working class. It was it was a major, major victory. How did we achieve this victory? Uh, 1934 was the year of general strikes. Uh, before that, you had several other general strikes that happened across the country. Right. You had the Gen Seattle general strike of 1919. You had the, the Winnipeg general strike of 1919. You had, uh, uh, you know, uh, coal miners striking against coal towns in the 20s. Um, you had a ton of it. And then in 34 was there was like a huge spike. Uh, textile workers. There were uh, taxi drivers, truck drivers. Uh, the Toledo auto workers went on strike as well. Um, who else went on strike? And, and a lot of them got violent, by the way, and not because of the strikers. They got violent because the state or the uh, or or the president himself, Franklin Delano Roosevelt himself, would send the National Guard to some of these places and 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 basically say, yeah, you can fucking open fire on these people. And that's cool with me. So that's what they would do. So then the strikers would fight back. Uh, a couple of them died. A couple of them were unarmed uh, and 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 they were shot at anyway. I mean, this is how America responds when working class people go, hey, we deserve human rights. Hey, we would like to be treated as people now. And they're like, kill the buy shirts. So when when that force failed, right? Because it failed, because it did, it failed, it fucking failed. Uh, the, you know, these these radical socialists and communists who, you know, whatever differences there were between socialist, communist, the IWW, they dropped those differences and they were like, yeah, we can all agree that we're all being fucked by these assholes, right? Great. Let's all organize together, form a general strike, march on the streets. Uh, and by the way, if they fire back at us, guess what? Uh, Chucky over here has got a whole fucking truckload of guns. We're going to fight back. We're going to defend ourselves. We're, gonna, we're not going to open with Chucky's guns. That's crazy. We're not going to. Chucky, put the guns away, please. We talked about this. You can't just you can't just keep bringing your guns out at the meeting, buddy. OK, put the guns away. And then if they fire on us, Chucky, you bring out the arsenal. All right. And we will go guerrilla warfare on these motherfuckers. And that's what they did. <laughs> and, and, then, and, and then you had. Uh, oh, man, I can't remember the position in the cabinet, but you had a high ranking person from FDR's cabinet. Right. Which you would assume is all pro labor and rah, rah, rah. <laughs> he comes out and he goes, these labor strikes are un-American. You guys need to get back to work. <laughs> Again, what we learn about FDR in school is that he was the working class champion. And the reason why working class people have all of these rights is because FDR was the one who championed them. No, he didn't. He just realized that that if he continues to keep sending the National Guard into the streets to fight working class Americans who have also taken arms to defend themselves, he's going to start another fucking civil war. So what does he have to do? 
and I and I do think that at a certain point, you know, I might be wrong, but from what I've read, my interpretation would be that they. I think I think he did get influenced by this to change his perspective. FDR was a banker's kid. His uncle was connected to, I want to say, J.P. Morgan. I might be wrong. Don't quote me on that. But he was his uncle was connected to a large bank. I mean, he was a rich trust fund kid, and he became the president. Go go fig, go figure. Another fucking rich guy became president of the United States. And so, you know, FDR signed the Wagner Act, and here we are again, where now Joe Biden has the opportunity to 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 do this, right? And he and he has said that he's he's backing this. Um, it narrowly passed in the House. I guess it's back, it's on the Senate. And uh, one uh, Bernard Sanders uh, has said that he's going to put use portions of uh, of this bill for the Democrats Senate budget uh, bill. Uh, and part of the, the way that he's going to do it is because it's a budget bill, it can't include like, you know, it can't include like legitimizing unions and increasing collective bargaining for work for workers um so you can't do that because it's a budget bill so it has to be budget related so the way he's going to try to do it is by saying well if these uh corporations aren't going to follow you know national labor laws which they don't um they've circumvented a lot of shit even 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 the fact that like you know oh if you have a full-time employee then you have to you know provide them health care and benefits and so on and so forth and they go, yeah, OK, well, none of our fucking people are full time employees. They are either part time or independent contractors. So, you know, and, and they're allowed to do that. Now we have to we, we have to learn from those lessons and go, yeah, no, part time employees and independent contractors also deserve health care. And if they're going to do a job for you, then, yeah, you should also. Provide them with those benefits. Holy shit, what a concept. So I'm 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 all for this sort of a penalty to be included in the bill. Um, and look, you guys, you guys know me. I'm I'm not a I'm not a big electoral politics guy, uh, but this has promise. And uh, I'm, I'll get into how I think we can get this achieved. Right. How how this can we, we can get Wagner Act part two with the PRO Act. Uh, and part of that comes from the penalties. If you are really going to penalize these corporations, it can't be a slap on the wrist. You know, we you, you have companies that up up in the north, in the northeast, they're like waste recycling or not waste waste management companies, and they dump fucking uh, it, waste into a landfill that leaches into the water supply and poisons to people living in those towns. And they're like, oh, million dollar fine. You really think a million dollars is fucking anything to this corporation? No, no, no. Put a percentage on it. 25% or above, if you're not going to fucking follow labor laws, if you're going to Jeff Bezos this thing, if you're going to make your employees piss in fucking bottles because, oh, my God, bathroom breaks are, are, are a killer for my productivity. I can't go take a tour around the planet in a dick-shaped rocket if people take pee breaks. I need to get to the moon so I can build another warehouse there. I need to get to a moon so that I can use my dick rocket to try to fuck the moon because that's where my head is at. If you're going to be that fucking guy, 25% or more for every fucking labor law that you break. And then if it gets to 100%, then we dip into your personal wealth and we'll find your Cayman Islands, motherfucker. We're coming for your fucking money if you're not going to treat us like human beings. I need to take a breath. <laughs> I gotta show this guy. I don't know. I gotta show this comment because it's hilarious. Yeah, fuck the moon. Right at the dark side. <laughs> oh, that's a fantastic comment. But it, look, if you're gonna fuck the moon in its dark side. 25% or more. That's the, that's the penalty right there. You can't fuck celestial objects without penalties. Get your dick rocket out of here, you son of a bitch. Okay, so what so again, so let's go over what the purpose. I got sidetracked by this. Uh it's just so ridiculous that he just spun around the planet and he was like, "Hey, 
My employees and my customers helped me pay for this unnecessary joyride, huh? America, capitalism, thanks for making my dream of being a spaceman happen. Fuck off. Uh, okay. What does the PRO Act actually say? Uh, we should get to that, right? Well, what does the PRO Act actually say? So uh, the PRO Act, again, legitimizes unions. It strengthens unions. It also, uh, because now you don't need to vote, right? That's what the Taft-Hartley Act did. The Taft-Hartley Act said that employees have to vote, have to vote whether they want a, uh, a union to come in uh, and and help organize the workers, right? There has to and and it has to be a majority of of the people. Um, and in the meantime, the unions can't come onto the work site and actually uh, talk about why it would be beneficial to be in a union on the work site, right? So they have to figure out a different way to do it. And corporations can show anti-union propaganda all the live long day, which they do. They they that that is a fucking fact that corporations uh, nonstop use anti-union propaganda to prevent organizing. Amazon does it. Walmart does it. Hobby Lobby does I mean, these corporations, they all fucking do it nonstop. So they're allowed to do that. But the so it's 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 tilted. It's a tilted law um, that undoes that. Now unions can come on and, and say, hey, this is why you should join a union. We're going to fight you regardless of whether you join or not. But this is the benefits you get uh, from from labor organizing and collective bargaining. Uh, and it gives the workers a right to collectively bargain, right? It, it which gives them the right to organize with a union. Uh, it ends right to work laws, which, as the name suggests, is all you have the right to do. That's it. So they can pay you dick all wages and say, "Hey, at least you're working, and that's your right, and that's all you get to do. You don't get to ask for a raise. You don't get to move up with. The, you're not guaranteed for any of this shit." You just have to be happy. So it gets rid of that, which is great because right to uh, right to work laws are 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 like just on the cusp of basically saying, hey, we're going to make you slaves and that's all you'll ever be. So stop bitching. At least you're doing something right. Like that's we're it's teetering on that line. Now, for ride share uh, and gig economy workers, this act, th the pro act, would would help these guys out a whole lot. Um, you know, it gives them a an opportunity to get organized, which I know they have. Uh, they're they're well, technically they're not unions. I think they're just like labor groups uh, because because uh, gig economy companies like DoorDash, Lyft, Instacart, Uber. They don't look at these people as employees. They look at them as independent contractors. And we're we're going to talk a little bit more about that in just a minute here. But uh, it, it, if they can organize under the PRO Act, they'll be able to organize and, and form a union. Um, they can ask for better pay, better treatment, and safety measures. Because, because these guys don't have safety measures. I mean, there, how many videos did we see over the last year of Lyft risers, uh, or I'm sorry, Lyft drivers getting attacked by their passengers for just saying, hey, please wear a mask in my car. Like, fuck, can, is that, that's all you need to do? Can you be respectful of this one individual's fucking health? You, the, you are in their personal vehicle, which they have to use, by the way, right? The, like, they have to use their own fucking vehicle. Lyft should be paying you more because you're using your own fucking vehicle to do that job. And then you're getting assaulted in your own fucking vehicle. Now, this this the PRO Act would also counter Prop 22 in California, which is uh, if you're unfamiliar with what Prop 22 is, it's basically um, uh, a, 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 a proposition that got passed because uh, Lyft, Uber, you know, DoorDash, all these tech companies. All these, you know, gig economy companies spent millions of dollars buying off politicians to say, hey, we can call uh, these these plebs independent contractors and basically treat them like dog shit and nobody can say anything about it. That passed because there was money involved, like millions of dollars that they threw into getting this thing passed. The PRO Act would undo it. Um. Prop 22 also prevented them from organizing, uh, choosing their rides. Uh, so so now they can't say they, they can't decline too many rides. Like 
if you decline a job, and I know this from working from Lyft, and I have a bunch of other people that work for a few other, I have friends that work for a few other of these companies as well. Um, if you decline certain things multiple times, you get penalized. I remember I declined a ride because I would have to drive 25 minutes to go pick this person up for, for a 10 minute drive or something like that. And they don't pay you to get from from where you're at to the destination to pick somebody up. So I would have to drive 25 minutes. I'm not getting paid for it. Um, you know, so I, I think you should get paid for it. That should be part of your mileage, right? But they don't. Instacart did the same thing to me, right? I would decline things that are too far away. And, and then they penalize you, right? And one of the things that I remember Instacart doing is they would say, oh, well, you can't take anything for X amount of time. So now you're fucked. And you're like, well, I can take something that's closer to me. I just don't want to drive 20 miles to do it. So choosing their rides is important. And under Prop 22 in California, they can't fucking do that. So if somebody is 25 minutes away, well, guess what? You got to do it. Take the fucking ride. That's how they operate now. So Prop 22 did that. Uh, it also prevents them from getting health care. So Lyft, Lyft used to offer health care. I don't think they offer it anymore. Um, but even then, it was like not very affordable. Uh, or the ones that were affordable, like I, I found one for 45 bucks a month, covered nothing. So it was just me paying $45 a month for me to be like, hey, would you like to give me a hospital bill? And I'll give you $45 <laughs> for, for you to print out the, the, that piece of paper. <laughs> That's basically what that was. Now, here's the problem, too, with, with these guys being independent contractors. A lot of people like uh, uh, labor professors and labor scholars and stuff have looked at these gig economies and said, well, they're not independent contractors because you have a set salary for them, right? It, it's We don't get to go in and try to negotiate to be like, I know you're saying it's $1.32 dollar thirty-two. Um, it's it's a dollar thirty two per mile, but I would like two fifty a mile. They don't get to do that. They're not negotiating their rates or their prices. Oh, I know it says it's a five dollar minimum. I would like a six dollar minimum, and then maybe I'll say one eighty five per mile. Also, I would like they don't get to do that sort of stuff. The the uh, these corporations are telling you what you get per mile and what your minimum is, and what you're getting out of that minimum. And independent contractors have to operate outside the scope of your regular business. Well, their regular business is being a rideshare company. Their regular business is being a food delivery company or a grocery delivery company or what have you. And these people are doing your regular business. So why are they not considered employees? Because again, Taft-Hartley from 1947, 1946, 1947 allows them to do this. It allows them to circumvent um, na national labor laws. Independent contractors don't have to get health care. They don't have to be paid, probably. They don't even have to be treated human. The PRO Act, again, removes that those anti-union meetings. It ensures that a contract is reached instead of a corporation denying negotiations, because they'll do that. They'll say, yeah, we don't, we don't want to negotiate with you about this. Right. There's um, uh, em employment transparency and corporate transparency, meaning they have to be up, open and upfront about a lot of their stuff. They can't hide shit. Right. Corporate transparency is huge because that's how they hide money in tax havens and tax shelters. That's what, I mean, Delaware is a huge one. Delaware is a huge tax shelter. Oh, and this is a big one, too. It, it eliminates permanently replacing striking workers. Right. Scabs. Right. That's what they're called. They're called scabs. Uh, they would just hire scabs and they, and then they would say, oh, you're picketing, you're striking. Uh, well, you're fired. This prevents that. This prevents that. Because then when they fire the employee, they can say, well, this person doesn't work here anymore. So I don't know what they're actually striking this company for. They have no connection to it. It's, 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 it's a nice way to fuck over the working class again. So what do capitalists have to say about this, right? Obviously, capitalists are against this. I am I am genuinely surprised that Joe Biden is for this, uh, to be honest. I'm very genuinely surprised that Joe Biden is for this. And uh, and I, I hope that he understands the same thing that uh, FDR understood and LBJ understood is uh, if you if you try to keep fucking us over, we'll keep taking to the streets. 
I don't know how he hasn't understood it in the context of defunding the police and, and the Black Lives Matter protests. Uh, but hey, Crime Bill Joe, right? That's his fucking opus. His opus is creating the prison industrial complex uh, and a mass incarceration program that is specifically targeted people of color in poor neighborhoods. Demonizing a, a plant that is a medicine. So go figure that guy champions cops and doesn't want a plant that is also a medicine to be legally used as a medicine. Uh, but this, I am genuinely shocked. I, I'm, I'm, well, I shouldn't be because of his connection with the AFL, and the AFL is pro, uh, is does want the pro act to be passed as well because it would strengthen them a whole lot more. Um, the AFL, I have mixed feelings with. I again, it kind of goes into the same way I look at like the National DSA and the National Green Party. I'm not a huge fan of them on a national front, but I have seen you know local chapters do really great things. Uh, this is the history of the AFL is not great. They only wanted white male tradesmen to be a part of their organization. Obviously, that's not the case anymore. Um, but there are, I mean, there are larger unions that are behind this. Again, it gives them more power, right? It it does it, it, at that point. I think on a local level, it allows them the opportunity to reorganize it themselves. So if you know, I'm in Pittsburgh. If there's a Pittsburgh chapter of the AFL and they want to negotiate with something like somebody like UPMC. Instead of going in and being like, what are the terms? Hey, the employees want X, Y, Z. They go, yeah, no, here's what we're offering. And either you can take it or leave. And and then unions have to go, well, I guess we'll take it because, you know, what, leaving it is just going to mean that we get nothing. Look at what happened to Frito-Lay, right? Those people basically said, well, they have to work weekends, but they but the corporation can still make them work uh, six 12-hour 12 uh, 12 hour shifts in a row. But that's not a win for them. That's literally what they were fighting against. That they were working like 12, 12 to 16 hour shifts nonstop, seven days a week, getting no breaks. That's not a win. The, again, under the PRO Act, Frito Lay would have been penalized fucking heavily because they're violating labor laws. You can't make people do that. But capitalists, so so here's some of the things that capitalists are saying, right? There was some CEO of, of the National American uh, Manufacturers uh, who was very gleeful and chummy with the Yahoo Finance people. Uh, and, you know, he, the, the capitalists think that the PRO Act is death. They think it's the worst thing that's ever come out. Uh, they claim that they already have a strong relationship with the workers, and this is going to get in the way. Wh where? Where do you have a strong? Because I bet you... You don't know the names of one of of even fucking one employee that works on on the manufacturing floor. So you don't have a strong relationship with them. If you did, they wouldn't be picketing your fucking company now, would they? If you did, when they said, "Hey, we would like to be paid and treated better and perhaps get health care, you would have listened to them. And boy, if this is how you treat people that you, quote, have a strong relationship with, fuck, you sound like an abusive dick. Because I bet you have a strong relationship with your family and your wife and your kids as well. And if if they're saying you're doing something shitty and you go, nah, but we have a strong relationship, like, you are an abusive prick. What else did this guy say? Uh, oh, and then he goes, th yeah, this is this is hilarious. He goes, it gets rid of, quote, settled worker right laws. Like what, Taft-Hartley? Because people have been fighting Taft-Hartley since the day it was fucking written because it's an insane pro-corporate anti-worker bill. And you can claim it was settled, but that's because you just ignore anybody that says that it is a garbage fire bill, which it is. It's a dumpster fire of a bill. It should have never been written in the first place. And boy, oh boy, Harry Truman, you, you, one of the reasons why Dwight D. Eisenhower didn't run with the Democratic Party and went uh, and ran as a fucking Republican was because of the Taft-Hartley Act. <clears throat> then he claims anonymity, right? Oh, the workers don't won't have anonymity if they're if they're, you know, unionized and they're organizing and all this other shit. Yeah, because their anonymity is really what they're con uh, concerned about not being able to feed their family. Oh no, people might know my name. F 
well, what? Oh, honey, I'm, I know we haven't eaten food in three days because I haven't been able to afford it. But if I organize, people might know me. That's also another fucking insane reasoning. And then they claim unions have been successful. Where? Yeah, the ones that line up with the corporations do. They do become successful. Uh, the the union that Amazon workers were trying to unionize under have a record of that. They have a record of siding with the corporation, um, you know, a majority of the time. So if you're claiming that's successful, well, no, that's not successful. That's the union either on the side of the corporation, which doesn't really make them a union, because the point of being a, 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 a union is to be a voice for the working class people. So your premise is faulty all in all. And if unions were actually successful, then people would have better benefits. They would have health care. They would have a living wage. They would be able to take vacations. We wouldn't have so many people go becoming homeless all of a sudden. I talked this on. I talked about this on Placone's uh, uh, Ron Placone's live stream today. We talked about how uh, when when a company actually treats its employees nicely, they become more profitable. This guy is saying the opposite. Is the other myth that they uh, they come out? They said the Pro Act will make you join unions. You'll have to join unions. False. It won't. The Wagner Act didn't force unions on people. People wanted to join a union. People wanted collective bargaining. People wanted to be fucking heard in the workplace. And regardless of whether you join a union or not, they're still going to fight for you and your rights as a worker, as an employee. So why would you not join one anyway? I'm not saying that you should. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. It just logically makes sense that you would. They're going to fight for you anyway. Everything capitalists talk about when they when they um, uh, talk about the pro, you know the the oh the, this is terrible when they whenever they shit on the pro act they only talk about pro, uh, profits right that the guy from Nam the CEO of Nam uh, whose name I can't remember and I don't give a shit about uh, talks about positive momentum for for uh, you know for the markets and increased wealth well what about positive momentum in the livelihoods of your workers, the health and welfare, the health and well-being of your workers. Any positive momentum that we can take in that? No, because it all boils down to the, the bottom line and the extraordinary amount of wealth that you can make that you're not going to share with your workers. If you did, we wouldn't be having this conversation now, would we? I mean, they're literally making up excuses. That's that's basically what they're doing, right? They're 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 ma they're they're making up excuses to sit there and say, "Oh, socialism will kill America." Will it? If that was the case, then the military uh, would be done, because that's one of the biggest socialist secrets in America. You want to know how you how you succeed by being in the military? By continuing to be in it, by being a career officer. Career officers get great health care. They get their education covered. Their families are covered. And they have a, a fantastic fucking salary. So guess who doesn't have to worry about any sort of PTSD or physical ailments from, from being deployed overseas to fight rich people's wars? Anybody that makes the military their fucking career. Anybody that came out of the military, they could give a good goddamn about you. The military is America's biggest socialist secret, but socialism doesn't work. Well, if that's the case, then the military should be failing. It should be collapsing under its own weight. But, hey, the budget keeps going up every year, doesn't it? <laughs> How's that? What? They don't have any, any legitimate uh, counterpoints to this. Let's look at some comments. Jesse, hello. Uh, Jesse's in a fantastic band called the Lori Creek. You guys should go check out Lori Creek because they're awesome. 
Uh, they put out a full full length album last year. It is phenomenal. You should go uh, check this check this out. Uh, since I review a lot of uh, tax returns, Uber and Lyft drivers typically have losses because of unreimbursed mileage and tolls. My mom said the same thing. My mom actually. Uh, so uh, when my mom was doing like tax work and stuff, she she told me to be very careful when I wanted to do like DoorDash and stuff to supplement some income, and she said the exact same thing. She's like, you're gonna you you might wind up losing money, so be careful about how you do this thing. <laughs> right, beautiful bit of fuckery right there. Yes, I agree. I agree. Uh, they're still hanging uh, this largely on scheduling. If there's not a, a set schedule, it's not an employee. Uh, anytime your income is determined by the schedule you set and the jobs you accept, uh, you're a contractor. This happens in sales a lot too. Wow, I did not know that. Okay, so that's the that's the technicality. That's really interesting. So because because you don't have a set schedule, you you're not a salaried employee. That's fucking crazy. That is very good to know. That is that is an that is a good argument to 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 know that the is it, it, coming at you, isn't it? That's the yeah. Thank you, Jesse. Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> Jesse says, if you give the rest of the country health care college, no one will join the mil no one will join the military. <laughs> you can't take the government's recruiting tools, Chris. <laughs> uh, Jesse, you're describing the poverty draft. That's that's what Jesse's describing. It's called the, it's it's the poverty draft, right? A lot of people call that. It, it, there is no draft, but they will economically fuck you so that you have to join the military. Tons of people. I know tons of people that have talked to me about this, where they're like, "Yep, wanted to get out of my podunk town, needed a way out, couldn't afford it, joined the military. Couldn't afford college, joined the military. Too much debt from college, joined the military. Got medical bills, joined the military." That's called a poverty draft. <laughs> Holly, Holly over on Rockfin. Holly says, repeal Taft Hartley. I, I agree, 100%. Uh, oh, look what happened in the Haymarket. Yeah, so uh, Haymarket is the reason why we have uh, May Day. Uh, it's because of the Haymarket affair. Uh there, you know, and that was again, that was a huge labor movement that was disrupted by the Pinkertons, who were essentially mercenaries for corporations, uh, who are still around today, by the way. Um, Holly's pointing out some stuff that socialists have done weekends off, no child labor, right? Yes, those are things that uh, uh, socialists have done, and again, in our education system, we are taught that it's kind of capitalists that help us do this sort of stuff. Uh, which is untrue. Slap on the wrist. Make the penalties count. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, work till you die, but there's a labor shortage. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting, right? The right to work people, they're like, but you can work. Isn't that what you want? Why don't you want to work? And it's like, no, wait, yes, we want to work. But as Holly pointed out uh, in the previous segment is there's more to life than just working, right? I love doing this sort of stuff, but I know there's more out there to do as well. There's there's a whole world out there to explore, which by having that informs this, informs how I work, right? Informs the, the type of content I put out, informs the quality and the quantity of the work that I put out. So it's not a labor shortage. It's a wage shortage. And again, things like the PRO Act would fix that. Now, again, I don't have, uh, I, I did not get to this part, part of uh, of. Uh, of my ranty rants and I and and let me say this as as we wind things down is here's how we can make this work right if you want this but look this marginally passed in the house uh, and that's a goddamn travesty this should have passed no fucking problem democrats hold the house and the democrats claim to be the party of the goddamn working class and if they're the party of the goddamn working class that means that you would pass this bill absolutely no problem but what are they going to do they're going to blame people like fucking joe manchin Who's not a de who? Who's basically a, a Republican in Democrats' clothing, which means that he's a Republican. Uh, so they're going to blame it on them. But there, there should have been no reason why this is this didn't pass with flying colors through the House. Now it goes to the Senate, which the Democrats are in control too. So you know, if we're talking about strategy, then 
th this should pass in the Senate. But right now, a lot of speculation is, oh, it looks like it's going to get locked up in the Senate. Here's what we need to do. Take to the streets. Start organizing strikes. Start amplifying strikes. If you know of a strike in your area, go support them. Use that mutual aid we talked about earlier, right? The the uh, if the fridge, the Norfolk uh, Free Food Pantry, mutual aid groups around the uh, country, like the gym, like the Pittsburgh Restaurant Workers Mutual Aid, support those because they're the ones that are going to be able to deliver food to them. This has happened all throughout history. Whenever there's a labor strike, people start organizing around it, and then you know there's there's solidarity that forms around it, and then you can build solidarity strikes. That leads to general strikes. Those general strikes, just like 1934, are fucking terrifying to the oligarchs. It's fucking scary. They don't know what to do with them. Everybody stopped working? Yeah, everybody stopped working. And the only person that isn't benefiting from this are the bosses. You know why? Because all the people participating in the strike are still using mutual aid to take care of each other. That's what's happened in every single fucking general strike. 1934 in Toledo, when, when the auto workers went on strike, uh, the company tried to hire scabs, but they couldn't find any scabs. Want to know why? Because the radical socialists that were in control of the union that organized the strike were feeding unemployed workers. They fed them. They took care of them. And they go, join our cause. And when you do get work, it, it will be, you know, food will be plentiful for you. That's what we need to do. That's how we fucking win. Because we've done it. And we've won before. And it's time to do it again. And this time, we have lessons from the past to hold on to that victory. To hold on to winning. Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out these videos. If you enjoyed them, please hit the like button. Please make sure that you share this out. And please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, especially if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or Facebook or something like that. Please do make sure that you are subscribed because they unsubscribe and unfollow people from my page quite often, uh, which is very frustrating, as you can imagine. Uh, and please do make sure that if you enjoy it, share this out because sharing is a, is a huge way uh, that you can help independent media fight back against the censorship and the suppression that we face on a pretty consistent basis from big tech. Uh, I've got live shows coming up, guys. Live stand-up comedy events are back. They're back. I'm so excited about them. Uh, August 14th, I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Irma Freeman Center for Imagination. September 17th, I'm at the Art House Projects in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. September 30th, I'm at the Bardstown Lounge in Louisville, Kentucky. October 6th, I'm going to be at the Robin Theater in Lansing, Michigan. October 7th, I'm going to be opening for Ron Placone and Graham Elwood in Cleveland, Ohio. October 8th, I'm going to be at Trixie's in Detroit, Michigan. And I'm adding shows pretty much consistently. Uh, I'm not touring as heavily as I was before. But I am adding um, several cities to this tour date, so please make sure that you stay up to date with what I'm doing uh, and when I'm coming through your town. The best way to do that is to go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, that's where all the details are going to be. That's where all the ticket information is going to be. That's where you'll find out when I'm coming to your city uh, in the near future. I'm booking dates all over the place so uh, and I'm very very excited that these live events are coming back but I'm also going to be doing virtual shows uh, they're going to be less frequent but I will be continuing to do those virtual shows as well so don't worry we're going to be doing some virtual shows coming up uh, I'm also going to be putting out new forkful of noodles content as well uh, so don't worry those those things are not going away uh, just because the, the 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 live touring is is back, uh, but again, you can go get all that de uh, information right on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's k r i s h m o h a n h a h a dot com. You can check out all my stand up comedy albums there, past videos. You can make a one time donation or become a sustaining member, which does get you free tickets to both live and virtual events. Uh, you know when when I come through your town, so. Uh, be sure to check that out. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you next time.